Today I want to show you liquid topology. Liquid topology is a tool that gives you all information about the thread, cache and memory topology of a compute node. The first thing you want to try is the dash H switch. This gives you all options available with liquid topology. As you can see, um, there is a special switch for extended information about caches. There is one for clock, measured processor clock, and there are output options. Finally, there is the dash G switch that gives you graphical output of the topology. The basic usage of liquid topology is to call it just without any additional options. You get a lengthy text output, so let's look at what you get there. So first you get the CPU name, that's the exact model name of the processor. Next is the CPU type, that's the processor family, so in this case we have an older architecture, Intel Sandy Bridge. The next section is the hardware thread topology, and here you get the very basic properties of the topology, so how many sockets are there, how many cores per socket, and how many threads per core. This is the so-called SMT feature or hyperthreading. Then comes a table, and we first need to introduce some terminology. In the first column you see we have this, this HW thread, and this, is, um, this stands for hardware thread. What we call hardware thread is called in the Linux OS context processor. This hardware thread table encapsulates the to complete topology of a node, but it's kind of difficult to interpret for a human being. You will see later there is a much better option to look at this information. Still, the last column is interesting. This is the available column. And as you can see, there are stars and only the hardware threads that have a star are available to your program. Next, you get the sockets. And there you see you have some IDs in brackets. And there is another term we need to introduce. So this is used a lot in all liquid tools and we call this a thread group. Thread groups are hardware threads that share a topological entity, in this case the socket. So all the IDs there are hardware threads that share a certain socket. Next comes the cache topology. The cache topology gives you for every level of the cache basic um, features of the cache. So how large is it and again the thread groups. So which hardware threads share a particular cache. In this case, as you can see, because SMT is turned on, even the level 1 and level 2 cache are shared. Next, there is the memory topology. This is also called NUMA topology. Here you get how many memory domains are there, and again, which thread groups, so which hardware threads, share a particular memory domain. The distances uh, are or is a Linux OS metric that quantifies how costly it is to access the other memory domains or all memory domains from the current one. And finally, there is free memory and total memory. This is obvious. So total memory is the total installed memory in a certain memory domain. And the free memory is how much of that is free. This can be useful for debugging memory placement issues, for example. The first option I want to show you is the dash G command line option. Dash G gives you a graphical representation of the thread and cache topology. So you see all information you are interested in at a single glance. So this is a very nice representation of the topology. So you can see the hardware thread IDs, which hardware thread IDs are on the same core, the cache sizes, and if a cache is private or is it shared? So for example, here you can see, of course, the level three cache is shared. The last option I want to show you for basic usage is the dash C command line option. Interesting here is the associativity, the number of sets, the cache line size, and the cache type. So is the cache inclusive or is it non-inclusive exclusive? There are many applications or use cases where you want the, out the output of liquid topology in a machine-readable format. And there are two options for that. The simplest one is the dash capital O command line switch. 
This outputs all information in comma separated values. So CSV format. The second option are the output filters. So this is the dash lowercase o command line switch. And it has an argument where you store the information to a file and the format is determined by the file suffix. Out of the box, Liquid supports three options here. So you can specify txt for text here. Then the output is piped unfiltered to this file. Then there is JSON for JSON output and XML for XML output. And as you can see, if we look at the file, all output is in JSON. This is a very flexible system, so it is very easy to extend this with your own output filters. So let's say you want YAML output, then it's quite convenient or easy to add your own filter for YAML output. You find more information about how to extend this functionality on the Liquid web page. Next, there is a common problem when using Liquid topology on modern servers. So again, we use the dash G command line option. And as you can see, the output is not readable. So the lines are wrapped because they don't fit the terminal window. On, in this example, we are on the Broadwell system with two times 18 cores, and you have to make the font really small that it fits the window. A solution to this is to pipe the output of liquid topology dash G to less using the dash capital S switch. So this lets you then use the less text browser without line wrapping. So as you can see, the lines are not wrapped anymore and you can read the output just fine. If you have any questions, you can contact us at the liquid user mailing list. You can find the contact information in the info box.